Well, I'm going to the frontier, walk to the cashier, order up a root beer and a number one. Cover it with green stuff, one scoop is not enough. Find a booth is real tough, back by the Duke. Meet my family, meet my friends in the quirkiest restaurant I have ever been. All of Albuquerque's favorite spot, it's the Frontier Restaurant. The Frontier Restaurant is a proud supporter of ProView Sports Network. Get into the game with Garden Schwartz Team Sales. They have everything you need from screen printing, embroidery, and digital printing services, high school letterman jackets, and all high school and club uniforms and individual and team apparel with the most reliable brands like Speedlight, Rollins, and Wilson. And don't forget to check out the latest F7 shut helmet. It's all at Garden Swartz Team Sales. Give them a call, 505-884-1234. Garden Swartz Team Sales. Good morning, Albuquerque, and welcome to Red Menace TV here on ProView Networks. Michael Carlisle, how are you today? Apparently better than you. That was a very slow start. Well, so I, here's the thing. <clears throat> Last year at this time, we were talking about some of the disasters that was 2017 in Lobo Athletics, the entire thing, and it seems like this week could be labeled a bigger disaster than 2017, yes or no? Are you talking about the Lobo Aggie game? I'm talking about everything. I'm talking about Lobo Aggie game, which was just a, a, a massacre. Talking about uh, Hector Balderas in the AG's office once again. I guess mm -hmm. they're raiding the Lobo Club, or at least that's the way it's been uh, labeled all over the media last night and today. I'm talking about uh, the decision to keep Bob Davey as head coach of the Lobo football program. Three, oh, oh hey, it was you. I yes, just went, I just went yes, fully really there. yes. <laughs> the consummate pro. Yes, uh, I feel vindicated now. Thank you. It's a disastrous week. Like it's a disastrous saying, yeah, week. Uh, yeah. Michael Carlisle now has his cell phone on. Can there be anything worse that could happen this week as far as Lobo Athletics? I got to be honest, that was the worst. <laughs> for Lobo <laughs> Athletics? No, for me. Oh, for you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That, that's I care about that more. Yeah, I, and I get that. I mean, uh, yeah, you, you've had a, a lot worse weeks uh, <laughs> over the last couple of years. In, uh, in Lobo Athletics. Yeah. Um, is this week a good week? Uh, look, you won a road game Saturday. You got oh, a that's chance, true. You got a chance to win another one on Friday. The women's basketball team won. Yeah. They're playing incredibly well. They are. Three straight Mountain West Players of the Week. Yes. Uh, yeah, the, the other stuff, yeah. It's the, the Look, the AG investigation, it's just not going away. No, it's not. And you, you've said that the whole time. I kept saying, and I've said for months now, um, well, actually, for a year, because we had Paul Krebs yeah. right before he uh, retired. Oh, yeah. And, and we thought, okay, and I thought, I mean, you kept saying, no, it's, it's just keep waiting. And I kept saying, no, I think, you know. And so, then once he left, I thought for yeah. sure it would have gone away. So what you're saying is you were right. I was right and you were wrong. Yeah, but you did leave it, your cell phone on. I did leave my cell phone on, that's true. And now I've got that. I can hold on to that. Mark yeah. the date, Alden, mark the date. In fact, uh, can we make a promo of that? The phone going on? Of the phone going on. Sure. <laughs> Just the look on your face. No, you, you were right. I mean, you, you've been mm -hmm. on this the entire time. You've said the entire time that this, this was not going to go away. Um, it just seemed like uh, once Paul Krebs had retire, retired, I thought it would go away. Once uh, Eddie showed up, I thought it would go away. Mm -hmm. uh, once they kind of cleaned out the uh, Lobo Club offices and everything that was that, all about that, I thought it would go away, and it just seems like it won't go away. Well, a lot of that probably goes towards 
hey, we're making the effort. You know, we, we realize there's been problems in the past, and, and that probably gets them a smidge of goodwill. But yeah, once the AD, uh, AG's office got going and, and really got into it, and there's money being invested, you're not just walking away from it if you're the AG and until you figure everything out, because you also kind of have to justify, you know, what you've been doing over this, what, almost a year and a half now with the investigation. So, yeah, I, I'm not surprised it's still going on. Honestly, I'm not that surprised they're still finding new avenues to, to delve into. <laughs> and look, ultimately, and it, it's rough for UNM right now, but ultimately, it's not a bad thing because if you want to restore the trust from the fans, then you've got to get down to the nitty gritty. You've got to get down to the bottom, get all the ugly. Otherwise, fans are, are still going to wonder, you know, well, where's the money going to? Is the money being spent responsibly? It, it hurts right now, but in the long run, it's probably for the and again, you know, none of this is really on Eddie Nunez. You know, he's the guy who's now tasked with trying to clean this up. So he can say, look, it's ugly. We get it. We knew it was going to be bad. Now we're going to clean it up. Now, uh, on a, I don't know if it's a side note or if it's um, part of this, the AG raid. Um, director of marketing was let go. Is that correct? He wasn't the director of marketing per se. He was the deputy athletic director for external operations. You're talking about Brad Hutchins. Brad Hutchins. Yeah. He, he, and w I, at this point, there hasn't been any. This was because of or as opposed. I, I, I don't. I, and I don't know, but I don't believe the two were related. And as I understand, he's going to be let go and still get paid because he was under contract for one more well, year. If you're going to get let go, that's the way to do it, right? Well, yeah. I mean, I mean, if you don't have to do anything and you can collect a six-figure income, there's nothing wrong with that. No. I mean, would you take six figures uh, I, to do I, absolutely nothing? I aspire nothing? to do nothing and get paid six figures. Yeah, I'll I mean, be completely honest. I, I think you would take five figures and do nothing, right? A high five figure. A high five not, figure, not, absolutely. Not, I mean, I'm not talking 10,000. I'm t Well, though you would probably accept um, I might would take mid to mid upper fives <laughs> to do nothing for a year. I'll be honest. I mean, I don't blame you. I mean, I, well, I'm not making it. But I mean, I, you, you do nothing every I, day. I do nothing every day, and, and mm -hmm. I, you know. I'm, I'm doing okay. There, see, there you so, go. So, and then, I mean, I, I would, yeah, I would take the, yeah. maybe I yeah, should but, apply for that. Job. And we'll see as the investigations go along, but, but I, I don't believe that the two things were, were related. Okay. Uh, with Brad being let go and the, the, the AG's office. An interesting decision to make that choice now. I mean, maybe it's just a coincidence, um, but I mean, why would you make that choice now instead of, waiting one more year because it seems like that's what we're doing with the football program one more year I don't know. well the football program's a little bit of a different situation and we've talked about this a lot if you were going to get rid of Davey you had to come up with 1.3 million dollars to the buyout well but I mean it's not like you cut a check right then I mean it's you extend you expand it or, or extend it you try to get it uh, all, it's over all, three years all, only if Davey's willing to expand it you know that that's how they were able to, to buy out Craig Neal. Neal agreed to restructure well, what was in the years, contract yeah. for, for the buyout, and they spread that out over two years. Yeah, that's right. I got to be honest, if you're getting rid of me, I'm probably not that willing to, to spread out my, my buyout. Like, nope, you want to get rid of me, that's cool. Cut me a check and I'm out the door. So what would it cost to get rid of you? I don't know. How much have you got? <laughs> right now? Yeah. I think I got some free coupons. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll see you next week. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. Um, I keep wanting to like not talk about everything because it was painful, but we should probably take a break. We'll let Micah come in and, and do Cage Mind since he has a guest. You can regroup. I try, can try regroup. To get the pain of last night. Well, the pain of the week. Well, because I, I'm, I was nice. highly disappointed, and this will be my tease for the segment after, after Mike. I was highly disappointed that UNM made the decision to keep Bob Davey. I'm, I'm, I haven't, that hasn't changed. They were highly disappointed you weren't willing to donate $1.3 million. So. Well, yeah, I so mean, they, the uh, disappointment goes both ways. Yeah, right. Well, yeah, trust me, they're not the first, it's not the first time I've disappointed someone for not giving up $1.3 million. And I can guarantee you, it won't be the last. We'll be back right after this. you never forget the first. It's special. It's ex
picked up. It's now a third interception. Send it in, Dominic Nava. Step drop, steps up in the pocket, throws long, he's got a receiver, open, Goulet's out there, touchdown, touchdown to Noah Goulet. Play action down the middle, and it's O'Toole, and he's loose, touchdown. He's got a little bit of room. One man to beat. Garcia could be gone for an opening kickoff return. And they reverse it, and Garcia will score. 80 yard touchdown return for Jonathan Garcia. I believe they get. And they get off the tackle. Look out. He's Shot gone. out He's of gone. a cannon. He's DeAndre gone. Williams. For the touchdown. And down goes Rodriguez. The fighting pride of Albuquerque, New Mexico. The pit bull. Facing pressure, he's got to tuck it, he's scrambling, still scrambling, dumps it off, pass is caught, it's Irigoyen, he's still going, he's still going, touchdown Demons! Looking for the edge. Look out, Reese out in front. There's one more defender to beat. Now he cuts back up the middle at the 50. Reese is still on his feet. Santa Maria. Reese is racing down the sideline. Touchdown, Roswell. What an amazing return. Never forget the first. It's special. It's exciting. Very few things are more exciting and special than college football's postseason. The FBS Bowl season begins in a special place with an exciting game. The New Mexico Bowl once again kicks off bowl season on Saturday, December 15th in Albuquerque at Dream Style Stadium at noon. Bring your friends. Bring your family. Host your holiday party at the New Mexico Bowl. Annually, one of the best events of the year. Visit NewMexicoBowl.com or call 925-5999. The New Mexico Bowl, where bowl season begins. Is this my car? State Farm knows that for every one of those what? moments... This is ridiculous! There's one of these. Is this my car? What? This is ridiculous! This can't be happening! This can't be happening! Oh, it's happening, sweetheart. Oh, it's happening, sweetheart! Shut up! Shut up! Ah! That's why State Farm is there, with car insurance for when things go wrong, but also here with car loans to help life go right. State Farm. Talk to State Farm agent Marty Size or Michelle Rudolph in Albuquerque today. DreamStyle Remodeling has been wowing homeowners in New Mexico since 1989. 
Selected as Best Custom Home Remodeler for three consecutive years by readers of the Albuquerque Journal, we're also your exclusive provider for top home improvement brands like Renewal by Anderson, Four Seasons, Blaze King, and many others. Founded and headquartered in Albuquerque, Dream Style Remodeling is family-owned and now employs more than 500 people across the southwestern U.S. In fact, we've helped more than 60,000 homeowners improve their home in New Mexico, Arizona, California, Idaho, and West Texas. We're committed to providing a superior customer experience. We've earned 4.6 stars with hundreds of online reviews and have an A-plus with the BBB. DreamStyle Remodeling is a proud supporter of UNM Athletics. Visit our beautiful 10,000-square-foot showroom at 1460 Renaissance Boulevard across from Sam's Club or DreamStyleRemodeling.com to make your home remodeling dreams come true. Welcome to the place where we talk about people getting punched in the face. This is Cage Minds. I am Micah Frankel. There was a crazy huge weekend of combat sports this past weekend. You had the Tough 28 finale in Las Vegas. Kamaru Usman used big punches to get inside and grounded up former lightweight champion Rafael Dos Anjos. The Dirty Birds Tim Means from Fit and HB pulverized with ground and pound Ricky Rainey and then called out Diego Sanchez. Also Sunday night told me he'd like to fight the winner of Carlos Condit versus Michael Chiesa. Friday night you saw heavyweight and women's featherweight tough champions crowned. You also had action in Dallas, Texas. LFA, Miles Johns and Sarah Alpar are now LFA Bantamweight champions. Go over to Oklahoma where you had Bellator action. John Salter on short notice, rear naked choke, first round takes out Chitty and Jakawani. Locally here on Friday night, we had the Fight Night 4 event at Isleta. Steve Mean Machine Garcia shows great improvements in his grappling, nullifies everything that Abel Cullum was offering, takes down Cullum and pulverizes him with ground and pound in the bloodiest, the bloodiest fight I've ever seen live. I mean, it got sprayed all over me, I'm telling you. It was quite the sight to see. Full results up at cageminds.com for all these events. We also had Bellator in Italy on Saturday morning. Gabriel Varga, still featherweight champion, a first round knockout, and Kent Kroonhangen stuns the Italian crowd with a counter left hook that put out Alessio Saccaro in one shot. You also had UFC action overseas in Australia. It was good early for Taya Tuivasa, and then he ate too many right hands. Junior Dos Santos finding the big shot. He has the power. Ground and pound finishes the bout. In the big time world of boxing, you had Deontay Wilder. Two knockdowns, but get out box. The judges rule it a draw. Midway through 2019, I'm foreseeing a rematch. Wilder Fury 2. It was a fun, worth the buy, entertaining night of fights. And I'm sure the rematch will be just the same. Those two men put on a great fight. Yeah, local action with Josh Pitbull Torres. And I believe we actually have that highlight here in the main event. Masterful. It took 67 seconds. That right hand stuns Rodriguez. This right hand hurts him. The left is just a follow-up. Great uppercut. And the Pitbull gets the big first-round knockout, capping off the six-fight card. Fight of the night, Michael Sanchez versus Lorenzo Benavidez. Benavidez picking up his first victory by decision. You didn't see the fight card? You can go back and check out Expo Explosion 2. Again, always available on the ProView Network's YouTube channel. Sunday finished off the local combat sports weekend with King of the Cage Starbound 2 at the Santa Ana Star Center. The unanimous decision. Austin Lewis picks up a super fight, straw weight amateur title belt, got knocked down in the second, but really recovered to control the clinch and control the, the third, fourth, and fifth rounds. In the main event, it was a heavy wrestling performance as Nick Angioli is able to wrestle away the junior welterweight title from Sherwin Price. Now, as we head into this weekend, Odessa, Texas. We'll see a familiar promotion to us. School of Hard Knocks is out there this weekend with a boxing card. Des Hill in the main event. 
on the big national scene on Friday night. You have LFA 56 in Minnesota. The vacant lightweight title is on the line. Saturday, you have UFC action up in Toronto, Canada. Valentina Shevchenko and Yanni and Jacek fight for Nico Montano's 125 title. And then in the main event, you have the fight that I've been waiting for. It's going to be truly amazing. Brian Ortega versus Max Holloway. Let's not forget that there's also boxing action on ESPN Plus, where Vasily Lomachenko looks to pick up another title belt. Whew, that was a lot that we covered. And to think, we still got a guest. We got a top Muay Thai amateur joining us this week. We have a slide to tell you what's coming up next for him. It's going to be a WBC amateur title fight. Let's welcome in Quinn De Leon. The Lion joins us now, sir. How you doing today? I'm great. I'm great. How you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. So amateur fighting, amateur kickboxing, amateur boxing experience. When did you start training? When did you get into martial arts? Martial arts, I started when I was about 14 years old. I started downstairs in my dad's basement. I got beat up by my little brother. Not my little brother, my big brother. Your big brother? Yeah, how yeah. much bigger is he? Uh, he's, he's pretty, I think he's like 6'1", around <laughs> there. Yeah. So quite a, how, yeah. how older is he? How much older? Four years older. Oh, okay, yeah. and that inspired you to? Yeah, after that, it was just like, I came from Pecos, New Mexico, a small town. Everybody knows everyone, everyone gets along. And then uh, Colorado, I realized, well, there's going to be more. I got into it for self-defense, and then I seen belts, and I was like, man, I just have to have all these belts. So I decided to do it, and my first fight was a state championship, and I won. So I just came on from there. And a lot of your training and your fights have been focused around Muay Thai. What has it been about the art of eight limbs that's tr attracted you? Punching people in the face <laughs> and doing it for fun and <laughs> having a good time while you're doing it. Everyone else does it for money and people for other people I like to do it for fun and it's just something that I love to do originally from New Mexico you went up to Colorado what inspired you to come back down here the gym Jackson and Wink they they have opened their arms to me and they've made me a better fighter than what I was two three years ago so and now fighter martial artist what do you consider yourself at this stage a fighter a fighter uh, yeah anything uh, I've, I'll sooner or later I'm gonna be getting on to MMA I'll wait a couple years to get my you know, my ground, my ground game better, my stand-up way better, and everything. Let it move is that the eventual better. aspiration, is yes. MMA? Yes, that's the top goal right now, for me anyways. Win this belt and then start training for MMA. And what have you thought of this Muay Thai path you've been on already being in these title fights? Tell us about that. So it's been, it's been a super long journey for, it took me about a year to actually get this. I've fought in four times this year, not including boxing. It's been crazy. My father, he's my manager. He's been helping me out a lot and helped me realize to keep going no matter what and just keep fighting. And I fought in all my opponents have been older than me or the same age. So it's been great. And what do you like about the kickboxing? What do you feel are some of your best attributes with kickboxing? Kicking. I love to kick. That's, that's, what, that's my money maker. They help me get out of any type of situation. If I'm on the ropes, they, I got to throw a kick and I'm out, I'm out the way. And tell us about it. you're a orthodox southpaw orthodox. switch. What do you do? Ortho orthodox, and if I have to switch, then I will. But orthodox really just goes my way either way. And kind of what's what's your mentality or theory towards fighting right now? What are, what are some of the things you'd like to get done in the ring? What are you setting up? In my head, I think about just what I've done to prepare, how hard I've worked. I know like that I'm in the gym. I'm working harder than anybody. In my head, I like to know that I'm working harder than anyone else. And I keep pushing, I drive. I'm at the gym four hours a day, three and a half hours a day, trying to become something better. So it's just the mindset of me keeping a push no matter what goes on, just keep going. What have been some of the things that you've picked up recently with this transition coming back down here? What do you think you really gained being at Jackson Wink, working with the people you have? With uh, my coach, my head coach, Alex, he's helped me a lot with my kicks, my punches. I was throwing a lot of sloppy punches and I was like my second fight. My endurance wasn't up. Everything was, you know, going downhill. And I was like, man, you know, I got to get back on track. And then when I met Coach Alex, he's helped me out tremendously. My endurance is on point. My kicking's on point. My hands are on point. Everything's been on point lately. At King of the Cage, you saw a guy that you spar with a lot, Austin Lewis. Mm -hmm. He picked up that title. What did that mean to you seeing what one of your partner's teammates accomplished? It's amazing because you surround yourself with the people that have the same mindset, that want the same thing. And 
it's just something yeah, I'm truly happy for that guy. He's worked his butt off for that. And that's the best thing to know is that you put in the hard work for it. At such a young age, having started this, tr this journey at 14, how are you so decisive in knowing what you want to do, where you want to go? I don't see myself doing anything else besides fighting. Uh, school isn't really my thing. Stay in school, though, for all the kids that... You are yeah, going to yeah, school, yeah. right? You are. Yeah, he is school. working towards a diploma. <laughs> yes, okay, yes, let's yes, not yes, let's yes, not yes. let that go by. I'm still in high school. I am a senior. I am almost done. And after this, I just want to continue fighting because that's what I really love. It's my true passion. That's what I dream about doing every night. I sleep, wake up thinking about fighting. Yeah. How are you able to handle and balance the two? Two still be a student, but also keep progressing in this fight career. My father. He's a, he's helped me out so much. He's helped me know that you have to be a student athlete before an athlete. So I keep my grades and he'll be like, yo, you still gotta go to practice. And I'm like, man. So he, he's the one that really truly helps me push and it's just the mindset that, we've, that I've managed to happen. So do you expect to, is there, is there college in the future or is it the college of I'm gonna keep fighting? The college is I'm gonna keep fighting. If I have to go to college, then I will. But as of right now, I'm going to stick with fighting. So we're still going to have to talk you into yeah. that one. Yeah. It's, <laughs> my whole family, they've been like trying to talk me into it. You need a b plan B. But there's a thing. You can't be, have a plan A and a plan B. 80% in plan A and 20% in plan B. You can't expect plan A to work if you're in 100% in. So that's just the way I look at it. You can be all in on it and also possibly think about there is a future. Because this right. will only last 20, 30 years. Right. I understand. Yeah. But... If you do it right and you have the right people around you, it'll last and you can make it work. And what gives you that feeling that you know this is right for you? My family, my head, my coaches, the gym, everything that I do every day. It's just my mindset. I think about it every single day of like, I'd rather be doing this than anything else. What were those early days of training like? How, how well connected did you feel to it right away? Connected. When I first started, I was like, man, this is great you're actually throwing punches and you're like wow you're not getting beat up so it was just a great feeling to have and now that i'm in the gym a good day of work is me being tired going home and getting right in the car and i'm already falling asleep that's just up hard work and do you have uh, fighters that you look up to currently currently austin lewis he is probably one of my he's an inspiration right now he has a title so you know i gotta go and get a title so we could both be titled <laughs> homies you know and uh lorenzo keep pushing he's taught me how to keep going and that's just the way that's what we've been doing so there's been big influences from the guys that you've been working with here that have had fights this week in mm -hmm. austin lewis and lorenzo benavides both, both successful both been working with you a lot of sparring yes, a lot of strength and conditioning now also when you were coming up with the guys on the bigger levels that you kind of were a fan of bigger levels right now i would say diego diego sanchez because he's still fighting he's been in for over plenty of years and you know he's still going and that's what I that's my favorite thing about him is that he keeps pushing you got the title fight coming up you have a, a super tough opponent in mm -hmm. front of you what's gonna be some keys to victory coming up next weekend the mindset and the endurance my head everything has to be put together as of right now I'm putting everything my mind's coming together in my head my endurance is on point I'm on the best shape I've ever been in my life and I'm in the best shape. Coach Alex and my pops have been helping me out tremendously with my strength and conditioning. My sparring partners have been pushing me. And the key, probably my jab, keep them in distance, and kicks. A lot of people here in America, you're used to boxing. Boxing is two hands. Mm -hmm. Now we're, MMA is really big. You got your stand up and your grappling. Mm -hmm. Can you explain to people what Muay Thai is for people that don't know what it is really? So. When people think of boxing, they think of just straight hands, and that's all you have to worry about. So when you're in the ring in kickboxing, you have to think about, oh, snap. So if I throw this, it, everything's a little bit he like hesitant. So you have to think about what you're going to throw before you do throw it. And if you mess up, you could get caught with a kick. You could get caught with a hard right hand. You could go get caught with anything with, in kickboxing. And then also for Muay Thai, knees are legal? Yes, knees to the body and to the legs for amateurs. And then there is still more clinching than what you're yes, used yes, to yes. in traditional boxing. Do they have a time on the clinch? How long they allow no, you guys as long to work? No, as long as you're working. As long as you're working in the clinch, then you're good. If you're just throwing knees after another, they ain't going to stop. They'll just let you keep working. What were you, your thoughts coming across Muay Thai? Because, again, boxing, MMA, they're a lot more popular here in America. What did you think when you came across Muay Thai? I thought it's my favorite sport as of right now because... You know, it's making you think of more options that you're going to have to use in the fighting game. So when you go into MMA, you're going to be like, okay, uh, you know, all I have to add on is takedowns. 
and it's a big part of the game, but that's the best part. How's the field of accomplishment you have already? We showed that poster, if you guys didn't recognize it. It's a WBC title, foul, title belt in this amateur fight. I mean, that, that's some big time mm -hmm. stuff there. What does that mean to you to have accomplished this kind of plateau, be in this kind of fight already? It's meant the world. Last year, 2017 in April, Oscar Martinez, he's the head of the Colorado State Commission. I seen the belt at the state tournament, and I said, you're going to have to hold this for me. I said, I'm going to be back. And he said, okay. So every fight that I've had, I pointed at the belt, and he's like, okay. And then uh, now that I'm the interim champion, I won my last fight July 27th. I told him, remember when I told you I was going to need this? He said, yeah. So it's just been, now that I know that I have it, it's just great. When I come home with the belt, it's going to be something special. And it'll be up on Jackson and Link's Hall of Fame. How do you get the win? Power, speed, mindset, and everything a lion has to do. Awesome, sir. Look out for it if you can be in the Denver area December 15th. Like I said, there's a whole huge weekend of fights coming up this weekend. And if you want to go back and watch Expo Explosion 2, it's there on the ProView Network's YouTube channel. We'll be back with more Red Menace TV in just a moment. At Gala Chevrolet, our master technicians service every make and model no matter where you purchase your vehicle. But that's not all. We also provide certified service on every GM model. So if your car's been acting a little funny lately or something just doesn't seem right, don't wait. Bring it into the most modern the entire state and let us make sure that you're driving a vehicle you and your family can depend on. Service done right the first time, every time, right here at the all new Gala Chevrolet. The Barley Boy. Proud sponsor of ProView Networks for over nine years is pleased to introduce Black Iron Catering. From weddings and family reunions to birthdays and office parties, Black Iron Catering is perfect for any event. Contact Jamie at 505-459-8259 and book your event today. Black Iron Catering, let us bring our kitchen to you. This is Coach Borrego of the Charlotte Hornets. Uh, hello to all you parents out there in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Uh, I want to congratulate uh, 38 years for the AYBL. You guys are doing a great job. You've shaped a lot of lives, young men and women, and you'll continue to do that. Parents get involved, sign your kid up. Uh, it's a great program. Uh, it helps shape who I am today. It helps shape uh, me as a basketball player, as a coach. So get out there, sign them up. Have a great season. Good luck to everybody. Car Crafters, proud supporter of ProView Sports Network. Are you sure we're supposed to be doing this? Don't worry, I've watched him do it a thousand times. Come on, what's the worst that can happen? No, bad dog. Hi, welcome to Car Crafters. What happened? Uh, don't worry, we'll make it like it never happened. Car Crafters, it's like it never Sadie's is a proud supporter of New Mexico high school sports and athletics, and we here at ProView Networks would like to thank Sadie's for their continued support in helping us bring you all of your New Mexico high school sports coverage. Don't sacrifice quality of flavor when you're in a hurry. Golden Pride offers ribs, fried chicken, green and red chili breakfast burritos, and Frontier Cinnabons. Four great locations, or visit us online at goldenfriedatabq.com. Golden Pride Barbecue Chicken and Ribs, proud supporter of ProView Sports Network. Get into the game with Garden Swords Team Sales. They have everything you need from screen printing, embroidery, and digital printing services, high school letterman jackets, and all high school and club uniforms and individual and team apparel with the most reliable brands like Speedline, Rollins, and Wilson. And don't forget to check out the latest F7 shut helmet. It's all at Garden Swords Team Sales. Give them a call, 505-884-1234. Garden Swords Team Sales.
you'll never forget the first. It's special. It's exciting. Very few things are more exciting and special than college football's postseason. The FBS Bowl season begins in a special place with an exciting game. The New Mexico Bowl once again kicks off bowl season on Saturday, December 15th in Albuquerque at Dream Style Stadium at noon. Bring your friends. Bring your family. Host your holiday party at the New Mexico Bowl. Annually, one of the best events of the year. Visit NewMexicoBowl.com or call 925-5999. The New Mexico Bowl, where bowl season begins. Welcome back to Red Menace TV here on ProView Networks. Leroy Lucero, Michael Carlisle. Great segment uh, by Micah, as always. Sure. Uh, excellent segment by Micah. Hey, and uh, we did see the video or the commercial just now for the New Mexico Bowl where Utah State comes back to town and they're playing North Texas. North Texas, uh, Utah State ranked 23rd in the coaches poll. Ten wins so far on the season. North Texas has nine wins. Uh, I think Jeff's got a good matchup for the Gildan New Mexico Bowl. Matt Wells going to coach? I don't believe so. But I don't know for sure. Of course, he went to Texas. He right. was hired he, by Texas right. Tech. He, he took the uh, the Texas Tech job. So Matt Wells, and then of course former Lobo defensive coordinator Troy Reffitz on the North Texas team. Mm -hmm. So more Rocky Long influence all over the place. It's everywhere. I guess. I guess everywhere, but here. Um, <laughs> so we did. We kind of touched on it a little bit. The decision was made on Friday uh, afternoon. There was uh, an email that came around saying that. Uh, uh, after meeting with Coach Bob Davey, uh, A.D. Nunez had decided they look forward to the 2019 season, that Bob Davey's on the recruiting trail, uh, trying to fill uh, the roster for next season, and Bob's back for another year. Mm -hmm. um, did that happen during your show? Yes, or? it happened late in my show on Friday. That's right, yeah. that's right, because I, I remember listening to part of it. Um, I would listen to part mm -hmm. of it after you had, you had mentioned it. Um, what did you think? I mean, uh, um, what what is, okay? What has been the commentary on <laughs> on your show this week? Uh, most people who have called in wanted him gone. Yeah. Look, you you got to look big picture, and I completely understand. You're two straight three and nine seasons, two straight seasons where you lost seven in a row to, to end the year. Got blown out. Yeah. A couple things at work here. One, okay. you don't have 1.3 million dollars right, to buy him right. out. And even if you somehow scrounged it up, then that brings up the, well, why did you just cut those sports a, a, a few months earlier if you could have scrounged up, you know, the, the money? So th there's that bad look. There's also, and this is something, you know, and I get it, when you have bad years, you, you want change, you want to see mm -hmm. improvement. You bring in another coach, you're starting over. So next year ain't going to be that good, most likely. Right. And maybe even the year after, the hope would be, that Davey can get things going again next year. You are just two years removed for, from a nine-win season, and the year before that you won seven. You know, you're not just bringing him back, throwing up your hands, well, oh, we'll just ride it out another year, and then it won't cost as much to buy him out. You're bringing him back with the hope that he can turn things around and, and get the program going again. Now, I think you've got a lot of questions. Uh, you know, from a football standpoint, what are you? You know, this year they went to, to more of a, a spread offense. Mm -hmm. And, and really abandoned the option that had made this team unique. The offense suffered for it. What are you defensively? The defense, which I think a lot of people felt pretty good about going into the season, let's be honest, it was bad. So how do you fix that side of the ball as well? Plus, you know, the, the other thing that, that went into to this as well, you had to make a decision quickly one way or the other because you got early signing period coming up here in just a couple of weeks. So the longer last week went along and – no decision had been made, and, oh, they're going to meet at some point, but their schedules hadn't matched yet. Well, that kind of told me he was coming back because if you were making a change, the schedules don't matter. You just say, all right, you need to cancel this one and, and come see me because we got to talk. So the longer the week went along, I felt like he was going to be back, and, and sure enough, we got that word on Friday afternoon. Yeah, I, I think that's, that's mostly the way it was. It, it is, and we talked about this a lot the, the past couple of weeks, but I guess we're just putting a little bow on it uh, today. Um, well, the money that you talked about, obviously the biggest problem, and looking forward now, um, knowing that Bob Davies firmly in place, mm -hmm. um, how, how do you sell this program? How do you sell, how do you sell season tickets next year? That's going to be the big question. I think you're absolutely spot on when you talked about what are we doing offensively, mm -hmm. what are we doing defensively. Usually at this point, you're going to make some sort of changes you would think usually, um, well, who's the first to fall on the sword? It's usually a coordinator or two. 
Um, is at Cosgrove, I don't think you get rid of McGee at this point. I mean, you just hired him. Um, yeah, I don't know that you're getting rid of anybody, although I, I wouldn't be surprised to see some changes on the coaching staff. Um, as far as McGee, I, if you're going back to the triple option, I don't know that he would want to stay at that point. That, that's, right. You know, so I, I don't know. And I don't know that they're going back to the triple option. But, yeah, what, what you're doing coordinator-wise, I, I think is going to be big to, to keep an eye on. Uh, as, as well as the other assistants. The other thing, you, you asked, how do you sell the program? How are you selling season tickets next year? And admittedly, look, that's going to be tough. You're coming off two straight, you know, three and nine seasons. Uh, yeah, yeah, three and nine seasons. You know, I think part of that is once you decide what you are, you know, if it's you're going back to the triple option, hey, we realize we made a mistake offensively. Yeah. We're going back to this. This is what we do. This is what makes us different. This is what we're good at. We let the nation in score in rushing, blah, 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 something like that. Or if you're committed to, to, to throwing the ball, hey, look, we had some bumps in the road. We had quarterback injuries, but uh, we're going to throw the ball more. We're going to be aggressive. The ball is going to be in the air. And then the flip side, whatever you do defensively, you know, you're trying to sell that as well. Now, is that going to be enough to entice fans to come out We'll see. But to be honest, I don't know what it takes to entice fans to come out. Because no, I, I'm with you. Because I'm with you. even winning, you were still uh, – attendance was, was gradually dropping. So, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, for me, the, the craziest thing and, and, and what we talked about, it, it's, but it's – I guess it's – well, no, it is a moot point at, the, at this point. But uh, uh, it was just maybe we need a fresh look. And, and um, there is no fresh look coming, um, really. And so you just kind of kind of there better be a fresh look now. It might be with the same coach. It might be with a lot of the same coaches, yeah. but there certainly needs to be something fresh next year. And I don't know what that is. Well, again, I think it's figuring out what you are and what you're going to do. Look, there's no way that they're rolling out the same defense that they had last year, right? You would think. And, not. and certainly offensively, though, though defensively, I didn't think they were horrific. I just think they were – well, I think – okay, so they lost a lot of games at the end. But I thought, honestly – They gave up a lot of points. They gave up a lot of points because they were on the field a long well, time and because – that's a fair point as well. You know, I mean, it, it looks bad because yeah. of the scores, right? I'm not going to yeah. deny you that. Yeah. But let's be honest. I mean, when you're on the field three-quarters well, of the game because it's three and out and yeah. three and out, well, what are you going to do? Yeah, and that was one of the great oh, – look, the, the triple option served UNM very well. Mm -hmm. And that's why I wouldn't mind them seeing them go back to it because I don't want to say it, it hit a lot of things because it – that makes it sound like you're taking a shot, but you were able to control the, the narrative more. Point being, you controlled time of possession. You kept the defense off the field. You also kept the ball out of the opposing offense's hands. So they and, had and you weren't blown out that much. Right. Well, and, and that's part of it. When you're trying to throw the ball and you're committed to that, but you're not that good at it, and you're going three and out, and the other team's getting the ball back and going down and scoring, um, you know, you and M kind. You can go back and look at the box scores. They constantly lost the time of possession yeah. battle, but by pretty, you know, 10, 12, 14 minutes, you know, pretty significant amounts of time. That's another one of those things that the triple option does. If you're running it well, and the Lobos did, they control the clock, you know, and you're keeping the ball out of the, the opponent's hands. It, it, it's kind of funny because you know, I go back to when Rocky Long was here, and you know, everyone knew about his. Ball wanted, you know, what did I say? Five, five, three. D yeah, you, you had like 13. <laughs> yeah, play, play, play which helps. Well, yeah, it, yeah, it, it would it help. Does. It would help. Uh, but uh, there was times it seemed like there was extra. Sure. But but uh, my, my point being, he always talked about how if you controlled the offense, you could protect the defense. And, that, and that's something that he always talked about. Um, the defense wasn't protected this year. No. Um, and, and I think but, that that was no, part and, of the issue. And, and that's, that's, it certainly was. There was more to it than that. The, the defense wasn't that good. No, I, I, now, I, you, right. You, you had injuries before the season. Mm -hmm. You had injuries early in the season. But you couldn't cover anybody. You know, everybody was screaming, oh, you got to be more aggressive. You, you, you got to blitz. You got to do that. When you have trouble covering people, you can't really do that because if they get the ball off, which teams did, then they're going to burn you constantly. So the, the Lobos were, you know, constantly in a situation where well, we got to keep guys back. We got to drop back in coverage. We, we got to help, help out the DBs and all that. And you didn't get a lot of pressure on the quarterback. Therefore, the quarterback had plenty of time, and he still found receivers. Yep. So it, it, it was rough. Hopefully that's better next year. All right. Well, before we take a quick break here and come back and talk Lobo basketball, I just wanted to throw out 
Uh, for anyone that uh, watched the NFHS network here on, on uh, ProView last Saturday, of course, the La Cueva uh, Bears defeated, they trounced yeah. the Cleveland Storm 33-14. to Great game. Uh, congratulations to Coach Back and, and, and the La Cueva Bears as, as they just, uh, they went to Cleveland's field. Nobody really gave them a chance uh, to, to, well, to start the, before the game or even as the year rolled on. Everyone thought that Cleveland was just a machine that was going to go there. And, and uh, boy, I'll tell you what, uh, La Cueva really defensively and offensively controlled the line of scrimmage. They blew open wide open holes for Dondre Williams. And they also just really stifled um, Cleveland's offense. They were they were dominating. Congratulations! It was a great game, of course. Here on ProView Networks, basketball season has started. Mm -hmm. so there's all kinds, boys and girls. I always have a hard time, you know, remembering that because I've covered college and pro so long, or semi-pro, I guess, that I'm used to men's or women's, and it's like now you got to go to the high school. Boys and girls basketball here on ProView Networks all week long, all season long. Uh, you can catch all those games. But we're going to take a quick break, and we'll come back, and we'll talk about Lobo basketball. Is this my car? State Farm knows that for every one of those what? moments, this is ridiculous. There's one of these. Is this my car? What? This is ridiculous. This can't be happening. This can't be happening. Oh, it's happening, sweetheart. Oh, it's happening, sweetheart. Shut up. Shut up. Ah! That's why State Farm is there, with car insurance for when things go wrong, but also here with car loans to help life go right. State Farm. Talk to State Farm agent Marty Size or Michelle Rudolph in Albuquerque today. DreamStyle Remodeling has been wowing homeowners in New Mexico since 1989. Selected as best custom home remodeler for three consecutive years by readers of the Albuquerque Journal, we're also your exclusive provider for top home improvement brands like Renewal by Anderson, Four Seasons, Blaze King, and many others. Founded and headquartered in Albuquerque, DreamStyle Remodeling is family owned and now employs more than 500 people across the southwestern U.S. In fact, we've helped more than 60,000 thousand homeowners improve their home in New Mexico, Arizona, California, Idaho, and West Texas. We're committed to providing a superior customer experience. We've earned 4.6 stars with hundreds of online reviews and have an A-plus with the BBB. DreamStyle Remodeling is a proud supporter of UNM Athletics. Visit our beautiful 10,000 square foot showroom at 1460 Renaissance Boulevard across from Sam's Club or DreamStyleRemodeling.com to make your home remodeling dreams come true. At Gala Chevrolet, our master technicians service every make and model no matter where you purchase your vehicle. But that's not all. We also provide certified service on every GM model. So if your car's been acting a little funny lately or something just doesn't seem right, don't wait. Bring it in to the most modern service facility in the entire state and let us make sure that you're driving a vehicle you and your family can depend on. Service done right the first time, every time, right here at the all-new Gala Chevrolet. The Barley Bowl, proud sponsor of ProView Networks for over nine years, is pleased to introduce Black Iron Catering. From weddings and family reunions to birthdays and office parties, Black Iron Catering is perfect for any event. Contact Jamie at 505-459-8259 and book your event today. Black Iron Catering, let us bring our kitchen to you. Car Crafters, proud supporter of ProView Sports Network. Are you sure we're supposed to be doing this? Don't worry, I've watched him do it a thousand times. Come on, what's the worst that can happen? No, bad dog. Bye, welcome to Car Crafters. What happened? Uh, don't worry, we'll make it like it never happened. Car Crafters, it's like it never happened. Sadie's is a proud supporter of New Mexico high school sports and athletics, and we here at ProView Networks would like to thank Sadie's for their continued support in helping us bring you all of your New Mexico high school sports coverage. Hey, welcome back to Red Menace TV. I've been afraid to talk about it. I haven't really wanted to talk about it, but the Lobo basketball team. Hang on a second. Yes. Since you're afraid to talk about the Lobo basketball team anyway. Yes. Let's just put that off for just one second, because I noticed something a while, while ago, and, and it struck me. Yes. You're wearing your college Letterman t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. So, New Mexico and, Highlands. And, and Highlands, you do you not get Letterman jackets. You have to wear the T-shirt. You have to wear the T-shirt, dude. <laughs> oh, <laughs> tablet. tablet, so people can see. Highlands, New Mexico Highlands University. And how old are you? Seventy-four, <laughs> seventy-three. Fifty-year-old junior, loving life. 
a college life. We do the, I mean, you saw Animal House yeah. back in the day. It's not like that. But no. It's, but no, what, you know, if you I like actually had money, it would be like that Rodney Dangerfield movie where he goes There back you go. To uh, back to, what is it? Back, back to, to school. school. Things. Yeah, you, you just don't have the money, so it's just yeah, like, I don't have you, the money, you, so. you're just a regular creepy old dude. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Perfect. There you go. Do your fellow classmates, do they shun you? Or are they like, oh, you're a little weird. I'm in here. I don't, uh, well, he smells like applesauce. Luckily, I'm not the oldest person in school, but I'm not wow. the youngest either. So, Well, yeah, that, I, that goes without saying. I fit right in. I, I, I like it. It's fun. But uh, thank you. Yes. Uh, I'm wearing this because I've been a Lobo fan my whole life. I never went to UNM. I've always been a Lobo fan. You know how it is. I mean, there's no pro teams here. I mean, there are now, but... There's no pro team, so we everyone follows Lobo basketball, and then I've I got the bug of Lobo football, so I've always followed that. But uh, man, after this week, I just didn't feel the Lobo the Lobo love coming on, and and that's part See, of this game. Th that's the thing about being a fan. Yeah, it's, in good times and bad times. Yeah, well, I, I mean, you'll be on their side forever. Well, uh, guess what? I was born in 1968. No, that, that, that's what friends are for. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah. That's the old 1968, song, yeah. and and uh, I've been a Lobo fan my whole life, and everything has been. You're a fan in the bad, because it's always been the bad. Um, well, I shouldn't say always, but I would say 99% of the time. Speaking of bad, going back to what we gonna, how mm -hmm. we open it up, uh, the Lobos played bad last night. Horrible. 165 loss to the New Mexico State Aggies. Um, and honestly, I don't even think it was that close. Last night was not a good look for Lobo basketball. Uh, going down to, to Las Cruces, trying to avenge the loss earlier this year up at Dream Style Arena, the pit. Uh, the Lobos came out flat. They got outscored 50 to 22 in the first half. And honestly, the game was over at that point. Now, the Lobos did score a little better in the second half. But once you have a deficit like that, you're just not coming back from it. And, and sure enough, they didn't. So it, it's nothing new this year for the Lobos to start with a deficit. It seems like they've started slow most of the season, uh, but they've been able to bounce back as, as the game went on, whether whatever the changes were on mm -hmm. the lineups that Coach Weir made. They never bounced back in this game. There was never a point where you thought the Lobos were about to make a run, <laughs> uh, or at least watching yeah. it. I, I didn't uh, see at any point where you said, well, okay, if this goes down, maybe this starts the mm -hmm. run for the Lobos. It just right. seemed like they got smacked constantly. Right. Uh, yeah, I know, you know, and I don't, it, it, it's been coming up more and more the, the way Weir determines his starting lineups. Is that the best way to do it? Personally, I, I, I understand why he does it. I've mm -hmm. never been a fan of it. I, I think having a little bit more established lineup, now maybe you're, you know, rotating a guy, you know, in or out of a starting lineup, depending on, on matchups, any given game. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, long term, I don't know if they can keep doing it this way because you do seem to get off to slow starts and the first thing you would look at well why do we get off to slow starts well i mean the, obviously starting with a different starting lineup every game probably plays into that to some point now nobody brings that up when the lobos win or, or win right of course right? so yeah but at some point in time you, you may need to address that because otherwise why would you yeah, um you know have these constant problems with slow starts. It's weird because you're right, but like also at that point, if you look at it differently, as he starts getting changes the lineup in, like I said, they've bounced back uh, from the slow start. Sure. So, so it's like, okay, uh, we can do this, this, I don't know what, what you would call it, Bill Nye the science guy chemistry thing or whatever, <laughs> right? We'll try yeah. this, this little thing. It didn't work out. Time out, boom, let's get in our players the way, you know, move the rotation out like that. And all of a sudden they come back, they storm back. They didn't storm back this time. In fact, no, uh, you, they it, got smashed. Yeah, it, um, it, it, I, it did not get any better. I, I'm looking at the numbers here, and I mean, field goal percentages. Lobo shot 28% from the field. That's yeah, that's gross. No, look, Mathis struggled. He was one for eight, mm -hmm. uh, one for five from three, only five points for him. Uh, Drennan was actually your high scorer with 13. Vance Jackson had 11. Ezzedine had 11. Here's another thing. You're six games into the season, and for the second time this year, last night, you had to, to bench Corey Manigault and, and not play him the rest of the way for, well, you, for, you, for, for what was deemed after the fact, yeah, uh, coach's decision, teachable, teachable moment. moment. Right, and well, that, that's well, what Paul Weir says. Um, I like Manigault. I, I think he's too. a fantastic player, and I think he, he – is and can be a huge part of this program, 
but you've got to get him on the right page with every, whatever the issue is, whatever's going on, whether it's, and I don't know, whether it's his attitude, whatever, this one needs to be figured out because, look, last night's loss was terrible, but it's one game, big picture-wise. This, again, this is twice already. To me, this has the potential, if it's not taken care of, to become a bigger problem. To me, that's the one, cons the biggest concerning thing coming out of uh, the, the game down in Cruces. Now, I'm sure you saw the tweet of the pregame uh, fracas. The, I don't yeah. know. I mean, it didn't, I don't know, did it look like it was a big deal? It looked like a couple of guys yelling at each other. There's allegations or whatever of punches thrown or swings being taken. Mm -hmm. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know if that was the reason why. Um, it was, it, it, you know, here's what I, I don't mind that stuff. I like it because I think this is a soft, soft Lobo basketball team. I think interior, they're soft. I think their guards are soft. Ouch. I don't think they attack the basket well. They're out rebounded on a regular basis. I think they have two good big men in, in, in uh, Ezzedine and, and Pinchuk. But I think, like most European big men, they're soft. They don't attack the rim. I don't think their guards attack the rim. Uh, Drennan had a good game at the end of the game because he mm -hmm. came in. He, he provided a little energy. Yeah. He seemed aggressive. And he was able to get to the rim and knock down some shots and also get some free throws. But but honestly, uh, the rest of the team looked very soft. They didn't look very oh. energetic. Manigault brings that. Yeah. And he did that at the beginning of the game. But if you're going to do that pregame, you better bring it on the court. Yeah. Part of that is the style of play, the, the, the run up and down to, to take a lot of threes. Mm -hmm. If you're taking a lot of threes, you're probably not banging a, a lot inside. Yeah, you're spot on about the rebounding, and they got re out-rebounded hugely um, last night. You know what, 52-31? Yeah. That's brutal. Uh, that was a problem last year, and by and large, it's been a problem this year. I, again, part of that might be, n not to that degree by any means, but, but a little bit of that is – a product of the style of offense you play. You, you're going down quickly. You're getting shots up quickly. Maybe, you know, maybe guys aren't in good rebounding mm -hmm. position yet. So part of that is just a style of uh, of what you're and, playing. And three pound, three point shooting. When you when that's your offense, the rebounds are always long anyway. Sure. So if you're you know even if you are getting position, it's difficult to figure out how to get that position mm -hmm. on three point shooting. So I, I see that defensively. I thought they were horrible. Um, it, it was not a good game. No, it was I mean, it was bad. Let's be now, really honest. You're right. For for you know, sitting here in this chair discussing it with you as as uh, analyst, I guess, or or as a media guy, uh, college student, college student, you say you say, hey, it's one game of of many. Right. If you're a fan sitting, that's the end of the world because you just got your asses handed to you by your in 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 state rival. It's not a pretty look. And the team looked horrific uh, both times playing the Aggies. So, sure, uh, and, and I get it. And, and you're going to get a ton saying, of phone calls this yeah, week about it. Yeah, and I'm not saying fans shouldn't be disappointed, shouldn't no. be bothered by this. Absolutely. But if you win a Mountain West Conference tournament title this year, how, how upset are you looking back on the year that, that and, you lost And let's the be honest, and, and we're running out of time, but at the beginning of the season, did anyone think the Lobos were going to win, get an at-large bid? I thought it was, you know, maybe 80-20 that they have that chance. Mountain West Conference still not the great of a league. It still comes down to the three weekends or the three games there in, in Las mm -hmm. Vegas. But, hey, we're at the end of the show. For Michael Carlisle, for my man Alden, who's back off his one-day vacation, I'm Leroy Lucero. We'll see you next week. God bless you all.